Hi, everybody, and greetings from inside my bubble. My name is Pete, and I've lived in Ohio for most of my life. I grew up in the suburbs of Cleveland. I went to college in the foothills of Appalachia down in southeast Ohio. And about 20 years ago, I moved to the suburbs of Columbus to raise my family. I'm just a middle-aged, white-collar, white guy living in the middle-class suburbs of Columbus where I mow my lawn and sometimes I buy vinyl records and I talk to my friends who are also middle-aged white guys about mowing our lawns and buying vinyl records. I'm a 100,000% as boring as I sound. Here's the thing I want to tell you about Ohio. Every four years, we get walloped by a presidential election. It's likely because the state still has a very good number of electoral votes and a relatively even balance of Democrats and Republicans. So both parties tend to invest a lot of time and energy and effort into winning the state. A CNN major battleground call. Governor Bush is the winner in Ohio and he grabs the Buckeye State's 21 electoral votes. This is a state that he absolutely had to have, given what happened in Florida, Pennsylvania, and Michigan. It is also a state Republicans have to have because they just don't win the White House without him. Especially we go. With the loss in the last North. 17 elections, all the way back to 1948, it has only picked the losing candidate once. That was 1960. So Ohio pretty much always picks the winner. And, you know, as a representation of America, you can't really go past Ohio. You, you break the U.S. down by race and gender and age and income level and education, occupation, all these things. And Ohio is usually a microcosm of the country as a the whole. Football. However, and in the, the Democrats, last few I think years, rather wisely decided, let's not spend a lot of money and time. Let's focus on Ohio and Florida. And that's why those states are deadlocked tonight. Ohio has been litigation central today. An effort to take care of that problem. As for Ohio... Spoke to an advisor just in the last 15 minutes. He called it a dead heat. Ohio is effectively two states, north and south, Cuyahoga County, which is Cleveland and the great metropolitan areas, and then down south, there's a whole cultural differentiation that is much more like Indiana and Kentucky and West Virginia, although Ohio is unique. Always there. We have five. Look at, at why Obama won Ohio, and it goes to a lot of those things you were talking about, and more. In fact, I mean, this is a state that Bush won in both the last two elections, but uh, but this is a state now with a seven percent unemployment rate and with the seventh highest foreclosure rate. So you look at the breakdown of what Obama won. He took young voters by a margin of almost two to one. He took women with fifty-four percent. And, and uh, we've got to take a quick break, but before we go, a big state for Donald Trump. Donald Trump has won the state of Ohio. Donald Trump. Trump wins the state of Ohio, one of his core four. You saw it right there, a big victory there for Donald Trump. There you see it. Key state, no Republican has ever won the White House with winning, without winning Ohio. Donald Trump has won it. We'll be right back. So every four years, the candidates keep stopping by. National media floods in. There's political analysts around every corner. And even though I've lived in Ohio for more than 40 years, I have to tell you, I just don't recognize the state they describe when they talk about yellow dog Democrats from Cleveland or deep red state conservatives from Cincinnati or the rural voters, the social issue voters, the evangelicals, the minority blocks. I just, I always think to myself, who are these people? Why don't I know any of them? Why don't our paths ever cross? And that's an easy question to answer. It's because of this bubble I live in, this comfortable middle-class suburb where, don't get me wrong, I've built a very happy life, but certainly not one that has helped me understand my fellow Buckeye voters. And so as we head into another presidential election, I want to change that. I want to get out of my bubble and meet fellow Buckeyes from all walks of life. And I want to learn their stories. Where did they grow up and what was it like? What do they do now and do they like it? What makes them happy and angry and sad? What are the things they worry about at night when it's quiet? And once I learn those stories, I want to understand how those feed into how they're thinking politically at this moment in time. I don't have an agenda. I'm not trying to change anyone's minds one way or another. What I really want to do with this podcast and documentary is just create a better sense of understanding among the electorate in Ohio to generate the thing that I think is missing from our politics. And that's empathy. The ability to see something from someone else's point of view. And empathy is not my strong suit, but if I don't agree with someone about something politically and I know why they feel that way, I can understand how they came to that conclusion, well, we're in a way better place to have a productive conversation. 
We're not two enemies dug into trenches. Empathy is where common ground begins. And to the extent that people will listen to this podcast or watch the documentary, I think that will make us in Ohio better voters, whichever way we choose to vote. So I've got my two microphones and I got a camera crew to come along. And for the rest of 2019 on up through the general election in 2020, I'm going to be crisscrossing the Buckeye State on my free weekends, nights, whenever I'm not working my day job, interviewing my fellow Buckeyes, putting together podcasts and putting together a film. And I'm hoping that you'll come along for the ride with me. This is Ohio 2020 is a podcast and documentary film project that aims to create a personal and political portrait of the Buckeye electorate as we head into yet another presidential election cycle. Also, if you're not a middle-class white guy who mows his lawn and buys vinyl records, why not apply to be on the show? Head to thisisohio2020.com. There's a short application process. I'd love to come out and learn your stories, too. All right, everybody, it's time to leave the bubble. Until next time, I'm Pete Brown saying good times, everybody. Good times. Good times.